Okay, so this is a tutorial on the bones of the hand. So in the hand, you've got carpal bones, eight carpal bones. You've got metacarpals, which are these bones here. And then you've got phalanges, which are the bones in the fingers, so these bones here. So you've got carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges. So the carpal bones are these bones in the wrist. So the word carpus in Latin means wrist. So the wrist joint is this articulation with the carpal bones and the radius. So it's not shown that well on this model but the radius bone articulates with th these two carpal bones, these two proximal carpal bones, the scaphoid and the lunate. And um, the distal end of the radius has articular surfaces for these two bones, the scaphoid and the lunate. So in this diagram the positioning is shown a bit more accurately. So you've got the radius bone here laterally because it's thumb side and you've got the ulna bone here and you've got the scaphoid and the lunate bone articulating with the radius and this joint here is the wrist joint. So this joint is a condyloid synovial joint and it's um, the articulation between the radius, the scaphoid and the lunate. So as you can see here in this 3D model, the scaphoid and the lunate are slightly more medial than they should be. They should be shifted over um, more laterally towards the thumb side so that they articulate with the radius. So when you think of these eight um, carpal bones, you think of them in two rows. You've got a proximal row and a distal row. So in the proximal row there are four bones. So again, remembering that these should be shifted slightly over laterally, this one would be in this, these two bones would be in the proximal row. So most radial thumb, so thumb side, where we've got the scaphoid, so that's lateral. Then we've got the lunate here, just adjacent to the scaphoid bone. And then you've got these two bones here. So you've got the triquetral bone, and sitting on top of the triquetral bone, you've got this bone here called the pisiform bone. So these are the four bones that make up the proximal row. You've got the scaphoid laterally, lunate, triquetral, and pisiform. So the distal row of carpal bones. On the lateral side you've got the trapezium. Then you've got the trapezoid bone, the capitate, and the hamate. So there's a mnemonic for remembering these carpal bones and it's she looks too pretty try to catch her so it's going lateral to medial on the proximal row then lateral to medial on the distal row so she scaphoid looks lunate to triquetral pretty pizzy form and then going back laterally try trapezium to trapezoid catch capitate her hamate so she looks too pretty, try to catch her. So often a point of confusion is remembering which one is the trapezium and the trapezioid. So the way I remember it is that trapezium is on the thumb side. So I so it ends with um, just like th well, thumb. So trapezium is thumb side. And then you've got the trapezoid bone in between the capitate and the trapezium. The capitate bone is called the capitate because the word capitate comes from the Latin head and it's got this kind of head here which sits between the scaphoid and lunate bones so that's why the capitate is called that and I also remember capitate is Latin head so it's like the central the head bone so it's the biggest bone in the hand the capitate and the hamate bone is called the hamate because the word hamulus ha, hamus in Latin is hook so it's got this hook hook like process on its volar surface so that's why the hamate is called the hamate and you might remember the bone in the skull the little process called the hamulus that's that hook like process so that's that's a way of remembering the carpal bones she looks too pretty try to catch her and then trapezium thumb side capitate has the head and it's the head bone so it's the biggest central bone and the hamate has this little hook because the word hamus in Latin means hook. So just after the 
carpal bones, you've got the metacarpal bones. So the prefix meta is Greek, and it means sort of after, around, beyond, adjacent, that sort of meaning. So they are after the, met the, the carpal bones, they're around the carpal bones, so they're metacarpals. And these sit in the palm of the hand, so I'll just show you. So if you look at the skin, you can see sort of the position they lie, so just before the fingers. So these are the metacarpal bones, and they're referred to as metacarpals 1 to 5. So the thumb side is the first metacarpal, and you've got 2, 3, 4, 5. So, you've got, so when you're referring to metacarpals, you refer to them as the um, first, second, third, fourth, fifth metacarpal. And then these um, articulate with the phalanges, so the bones of the fingers are called phalanges. So the single singular term is phalanx and plural is phalanges. So in the thumb you've only got two phalanges, you've got a proximal and a distal phalanx. In the four fingers you've got proximal, middle and distal phalanges. And again this is first, second, third, fourth, fifth um, phalanges. So often actually you'll hear them referred to as um, the phal phalanges of the thumb, index, middle, ring and little finger. So that sort of avoids confusion because sometimes you might think, oh, does the, is the first one the little one or the thumb? So to avoid confusion in clinical, clin clinical medicine, you'll often hear um, people referring to fractures of the phalanges as, so the proximal phalanx of the th um, thumb or the proximal phalanx of the index, middle, ring, little finger, because that avoids confusion about which finger you're talking about. So you've got some joints in the hand that you need to be aware of. So the joint between the metacarpals and the carpal bones are called metacarpo... What am I talking about? Carpo-metacarpal joints, because they join the carpus and the metacarpal. So carpo-metacarpal joints between the carpal bones and the metacarpals. And then you've got the joints between the metacarpals and the phalanges. So these are called metacarpophalangeal joints because they join the metacarpals and the uh, phalanges. So these joints here. So these are the knuckle joints. And you've got this mobile thumb joint, which is the mobile. Um, it's a saddle joint between the first metacarpal and the proximal phalanx of the thumb. And then you've got joints in the phalanges. So on the thumb you've only got a proximal and distal phalanx, so you only have one joint, and this is the in intermediate um, phalangeal joint. In the fingers, in the four fingers, you have these joints between the proximal and the middle phalanges, and then you've got these this joint between the middle and the distal phalanges. So the first one is called the proximal interphalangeal joint, and the distal joint is the distal interphalangeal joint. So they're referred to as PIPs and DIPs for short, and the metacarpophalangeal joints are referred to as the MCP joints. So in rheumatoid arthritis, um, you, you get um, problems at the metacarpophalangeal and proximal interphalangeal joints, whereas with osteoarthritis, you get problems at the distal interphalangeal joints, so the DIPs. So you've got the carpometacarpal joints, the MCP joints at the knuckles, you've got the intermediate phalangeal joint of the thumb, and the proximal interphalangeal joints, the PIP joints, and the DIP, distal interphalangeal joints. One last point to bear in mind, is, which I forgot to mention before, is that the scaphoid bone, um, it's, it has its blood supply enters it, it enters it distally. So, a fall on the outstretched hand often fractures the scaphoid bone and something to bear in mind is that because it re receives its blood supply distally, if it's fractured the proximal fragment can um, die in a process called avascular necrosis, so it's important to be aware of that um, point. So those are the bones of the hand. إن أعجبك الفيديو لا تنسى الاشتراك بالقناة والإعجاب والتعليق على الفيديو وأيضا لا تنسى المشاركة جميع الحقوق محفوظة لقناة Arab Doctors Tube